Hello everybody. Uh, I got some questions on my last video about how I mount my skeletons onto these big bad boys here. And the thing about that is, is it's not exactly straightforward because there's two major components. You have to be able to get the skeletons to a point where they can sit on the horse, which is kind of finicky and a little bit more fluid. You can make it work roughly a couple of different ways. But the other thing is then, of course, making them stay on the horse and sit upright. Now, the skeletons I use are the Crazy Bone skeletons, and they are a little bit higher quality, I guess, than the ones you might get at Home Depot. Uh, I can't exactly tell you how those work. I don't buy those. So the methods that I use are specifically applicable to the Crazy Bone style that you get at Walgreens or uh, Kroger online, Amazon, that kind of thing. The roughly like uh, like this. Um, with the this kind of general mold. Um, now the thing you will notice if you have one of these and one of these is that their hips are fairly narrow uh, and that they don't get a lot of kind of, uh, I guess, y-axis motion here. Uh, but they they're too narrow to actually fit on the horse as they are like this. Now, what that entails then is you basically have to remount their legs onto their pelvises to give them a wider gait. Now, the problem with that is that then they don't fold as nicely when you want to store them because as is, they store kind of like this. Um, they'll get really small and it's great. Um, however, they will not fold up the same way. Uh, I don't have any of the riders that I've done this to here right now, but their gait, when you fold them, instead of being like this, it'll be more like this. It's really annoying. It's a lot harder to store, but that's the price you pay if you want them to sit on this. Uh, there are, on their hips, there is a mechanism that makes them lock, kind of. It makes them pose and stay. It's not a great method because any amount of gravity, other than unless you, if you stick them straight up, they'll kind of lock. But any other position, they're going to pretty much fall. You get right about here, they're going to fall no matter what you do. So I don't consider it a big loss. Uh, this mechanism won't work uh, once you do this. So you need to be committed to this skeleton going on that horse. Uh, in, in my case, that's fine. I don't intend on reusing these. I've done too much shit to them anyway. But that's just something you need to know ahead of time that these are realistically, you're not gonna be able to get these back on. Now, the mechanism works with a bolt here on the end, or rather, this is a nut and a uh, washer. There's another washer here, and in between those two washers is a spring. Now this spring is under tension, and it's what causes it to click and lock. You need to take this whole thing out. Uh, the best way to do it is a pair of pliers and a screwdriver. I, for a needle nose, I'm going to grab the nut. I didn't think to get my screwdriver near me. Actually, I use a bit driver just because I have it. This is going to explode. Uh, that spring's under a lot of pressure, so look away. Yeah, basically like that. It will do the rest of the work for you. You don't need any of the rest of that. Uh, you really only need this bolt. Now, 
The thing about this bolt, the nut that comes on these has a backing on it. This is worthless now. Uh, it does that uh, so that it doesn't come off on the version that is under a lot of tension. But you don't need that because the way you remount this, it's not going to work. You need a nut of the same size. I went and looked it up, uh, lost the packaging, but best I can tell, uh, this is a number 12 bolt, so you'll need a matching nut that threads on here. It needs to go all the way basically down to there. And the reason for that is that without the spring uh, in place, you won't have anything. The reason it's done that way is so that with a cap is so that it will hold the spring in place, which holds the tension. You won't have any of that tension, so you're basically just threading this straight through the new hole you're going to drill, and from there, you'll need this bolt or a nut to go down further to hold everything in place, which is why the capped one will not work. So, the next thing to do is line it up with your horse. The next thing I'm going to show you is actually how to mount this because it'll be a lot easier to put the legs on if you've got it where you want it on the horse because the legs don't actually help support it at all. You just kind of attach them on however they fit best, uh, conforming to the horse because the horse complicates things by being rather asymmetrical, if you can tell at all, with the wounds. It doesn't quite line up with anything so the easiest thing to do will be to show you now how to mount it now what i use to mount these guys on the horses is this this is a piece six foot six foot piece of five sixteenths threaded rod this whole thing is threaded the whole way up whole way down now uh retroactively what might have been easier is to see if I could get some three foot pieces um, but six foot works just as well I'm gonna mark it halfway which is vaguely here and I'm going to cut it with a metal saw all right now I've got my three foot piece cut uh, this end could be sharp as all hell Mine happens to not be, but it very well could be. The way you can easily tell them apart is this end is painted. Uh, both the factory cut ends will be. Uh, so, next thing you're going to need is one of these. I got these at Home Depot, and I apologize for the shop being such a mess. These are... Come on, focus... Okay, well, they're heavy-duty top plates. They're used for uh, mounting the legs on... Eh, well, they're used for mounting the legs on tables. Ah, there we go. You can see there. Uh, now, the good thing about this, and this is why you need your piece of threaded rod to be 5 16 because the, all of these that I could find easily, this is threaded in here 5 16 you are going to thread this big rod through this so I took this plate and I hit it with a rubber mallet on the door jam until it sort of looks like a uh, airplane yes that way airplane you don't have to get it super precise the uh, the way I do it, I use a bit driver, so it'll torque the screws down in here and it'll bend to the shape you need if it's a little off. I think this is probably fine. I may give it one more whack right here just to get that bent a little closer to form. Now, you could pre-drill holes, but my preferred way is to just take my bit driver when it works. Mine's really persnickety. There we go. 
take the screws, torque them straight in. Ready. See, I torque that in, get it kind of in line here with the center where the back of the horse is uh, seamed, kind of. And I just torque all these down until it's flat-ish. It doesn't have to be perfect. I paint these since I'm painting these horses. Um, but you could do all kinds of crap to cover them. Most people probably won't notice it. You could paint them black, try and match them with the horse, coat them in blood, cloth over it, any number of things. I find that this is the least obstructive way that I know how to do this. Now, here is the next thing. So now I know, I know roughly about where this guy's gonna go. Pilot hole is drilled. I use a one quarter uh, because it fits down in here and it won't disrupt the threading in this. Uh, but it gives me enough space to get this threaded down in here with a wee bit of effort. I've just threaded this in by hand, twisted it in, gotten it locked in nice and tight here. The next thing that I need to do, this I would highly suggest using a bit driver for. You could try and thread this with a pair of pliers, but that would be absolutely obnoxious. So, the way I do it, if you can get one on, this is the easiest thing. This is a uh, capped nut, which fits this 5 16 piece, but with this chewed up up here, it may or may not screw mine. Seems to be doing pretty well, just the last one didn't. You may have to use uh, just a regular 5 16 nut. Now, if you've got your socket on here, you could use a drill, I suppose, as well. The bit driver just gives me better torque. You're just going to fit this right over the top. I have done the final step for mounting the skeleton, which is to load in the size 208 um, eyelet screws. I drilled a hole, three points in the back, or two points in the spine, one in the pelvis, and this is plenty strong. I mean, he's he'll move a little, but it's got pretty good support on it. Um, this I may lower down a little bit more. It's a little high for my taste, but that's pretty easy to do. Just don't do it with the skeleton attached. I just sort of eyeball these till they're all in a straight line. Run them down the top. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Uh, the next thing that we will be doing is... Not this leg. We will be attaching legs. You could do this in a different order if you wanted and try and balance this up here and guess the legs, but I think this is easier. So what you'll need to do is roughly speaking, you'll fit um, you'll fit your joints in here and keep in mind where that hole is. And you are going to line up how you like it, get a rough idea, mark it, and drill a new hole. The final step here is just to thread this bolt back through the new hole. Use one of the uh, new washers, or rather the old washer and the new nut that isn't capped at the end. Just thread it on here. And now you'll see it, it roughly moves, but it'll hang down like this. You just got to get it in roughly the position you want before you mount it. And that's about all there is to it. You just got to take this cap piece, provided you have the right side, screw it back on.